What's going on YouTube? Back at it with another video. Today we're going over some Forex weekly analysis. It's a little disappointing that I've already recorded this video, but it just told me that it was not recording at all. So, hey, I'll try to do my best. Anyways, we have five pairs to analyze. EURUSD, EURJPY, EURUSD. <laughs> we have five pairs to analyze. EURAUD, EURJPY, EURUSD. G, GBP AUD and GBP JPY, right? So we're gonna start from the top. I'm gonna try to make this a quick video, uh, right? So looking at the four hour, it's stuck in between two zones, right? Two zones. It's at the top, which is a resistance, and the bottom, which is a support. And I just drew the middle right here. So what we're looking at is bouncing off resistance and support, right? Right now, it's just bouncing off the resistance and support. When it opened on December 14, let's go back right here. It was in a downtrend, right? Let me zoom in so you guys can see this. So it opened up right here. This was the closing on uh, on December 13. It closed at price 1.60913. And when it opened up, it came down, right? Crashing down and hit the support. It was testing the support. From the resistance, it went straight to the support and tested it and rejected the support. Once it rejected the support, all it did was boom, bounce straight up, right? So right now, what I'm waiting to do is show signs of rejection to the resistance like this. You see how it's coming down. And I just want to see a strong sign on the one hour per se. So that's a doji candle right there and coming down. And then once this one closes and it gives me an indication. So the next candle is under this candle then I'm gonna go in for a sell with a stop below, right? Just gonna keep this simple. Let's say next candle opened up here. I'll go with a sell stop above this uh, last wick of the candle. And I would expect the candle to be something like this. All right, open below here. And well, not that good of a drawing on this one, but yeah, below here and show signs like, you know, coming down something like this and then we can go in for the buy sorry for the sell let's just clear this up right now so that's my analysis on EA EURAUD just simple it's just been touching resistance and support and I'm just catching it at the top to look for a sell right EURAUD and EURJPY if we look at the daily you can see it's kind of sort sort of the same thing is happening, but on the other side, right? So when we saw that one, EURAUD, it was at the bottom. So real quick, I'm gonna go to the monthly and show you guys EURAUD. You see, it's at the bottom testing the support, right? And a lot have happened between, but it keeps coming down to test the support, rejecting it and going to the resistance, coming down to test support, rejecting, going to the resistance. So right now it's at the bottom. But again, I'm waiting for it to crack down a little bit. Then we can go in for a sell and at least target these lows right here. 1.59954. So that's the first thing EUR AUD. And the second one, EUR JPY, you can see on the monthly chart that it's going up, right? It's still an uptrend. But if we zoom in a little bit, so let's go to the four hour real quick. So I mark my zones, right? Resistance and support. And everything else can be figured out. In the middle so what i like to do is on the bigger on the higher time frames i like to mark resistance and support plus whatever i need to do my analysis my technical analysis and then i go to the smaller time frames like the 30 minute the 15 and then i mark my resistance and support in between that because on the higher time frames your resistance may be high and like this your resistance may be here your support may be here but on the smaller time frames you can find something like resistance here and support here so you can see whichever one goes and if it cracks the resistance comes down to retest it as a new support and if it shows uh, rejection of the support and keeps going up then we can go on for a buy so that's the same thing I'm doing here on the four hour on the daily I have set the resistance and support and on the smaller time frames like the 30 minute again I have set the resistance and support in between that right so right here you can see this was the resistance came down hit the support and cracked above the resistance so right now it's testing this res this old resistance turned to the new support and I have this mark right here, just to indicate, I'll do it again, just to indicate that this is 
the new support for now, right? As price is moving, sorry, this is a new resistance right here. As price is moving up, it, it touched the resistance but came down to test the support. This tense, right? Okay. And it came down to test this support. This was, before this was cracked up, this was the resistance, but since it passed through it and now it's testing it, it's a new support. So all the resistance turned to new support. Just make sure you guys understand that. And either way, if it's going down, the old support turned to new resistance. So just make sure you guys get that. And right now, same thing was e EURAUD, but EURJPY, I'm looking for a buy. So same thing, I'm waiting for it. Show me signs of rejection, you know, a nice candle. Just rejecting this zone like this and if the other one opens up right here then I can get in with a stop below right here so this is EJ and EUR USD again guys the best way to trade is uh, what I like to do is I trap the price right you trap the market and see whichever one it cracks above up or down and then if it does that look where it's going and then from then on you can see if it's going up or if it's going down you can get in on a position right but just try to trap it to where it has nowhere to go but hit your zones and once it hits your zones game on that's how you do it and again same thing with EURUSD I'm gonna be looking for buys but you can see right here the consolidation period but again this was set on high time frame right resistance and support but you could still be eating in the middle if you were looking at the small time frames and setting those resistance and support or your turn lines or whatever you like to do for trading just set them in and then just continue but again here when is this opened on to yesterday when the market opened it was on 1.24 sorry 1.21408 right around that price but on friday when it was closed it was at 1.21099 so if people were here expecting the price to go down a little bit further you can still see it's an uptrend so maybe some people thought i could test this uh res this support and see if it can bounce up but what it did was it didn't even come to test it when price opened up it was at a high already came down tested this zone you see this right here it tested this zone this zone right here right showed a strong wick rejection and headed straight to the top so this resistance turned to new support because this was resistance at first but it came down to support and crushed right through it, right? So this old support, this old resistance turned to new support. So again, right here, when it crashed right through it, you can see came to test it and then went up. So this is where you see again, testing the horizontal line. See, wick right below. And then you can even do right here, test, uh, aim for the previous highs. And then after that, let a, let a runner run, you know, let the runner run. But as you see, it's been an uptrend. It's just a little bit of consolidation period. But again, right here, what I'm expecting it to do is, since it has cracked above the support and hit the strong resistance that was here, set on the higher time frames. You see? Set on the higher time frames. What I'm gonna be doing is still looking for a buy. Still an uptrend. It just came down, crashed through the support and hit this support again, right? and then went up to this resistance and made it to support again. It's a little confusing, but once you get the terms, just keep focus. It keeps changing, right? And went up, and now what is it doing? It's testing the support, which you see right here. It's testing the support. And if it doesn't crash through it, because it's already made a strong base over here, then we can get it on a buy. And some people love the trend lines. You can even do something like this and expect price to hit something here and then go in for a buy. So that's EUR USD. And GBP AUD, I have set this pair right here. Let me show you guys. I have already analyzed this, like most of them, but I have set right here my Fibonacci level, right? My 70% Fibonacci level. If it gets hit, then I'll get in. If it doesn't, then I won't get in. That's why I have this right here to the side and not right here, because I have not placed a trade yet, right? So why did I do this? Let's just take this off and see why I did this. Why I did this was because this was stuck between, again, resistance and support. Came down, wicked up, and then tried to go up, wicked, hella wicks up here. You see? One wick, two wick, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Boom. 
All wicks, right? All wicks, which is showing you that it's not going up. Price is bearish. You know, it's, it's in a downtrend now. Buyers are trying to push up, but there's not enough amount of buyers, right? So what is it doing? It's wicking up, letting you know that, hey, if you're in an up position or in a long position, maybe you should think about getting out or put your stops to break even or take some profits, right? When you see a lot of wicks and you're already in a position, that's what it's telling you. But since it's wicked a lot, what is it gonna do now? Go the opposite direction, go down, right? So since it broke this horizontal le level, which was a support, what I did was this. See, what I did was wait for the leg that broke it and then hit it from the top to the bottom with the Fibonacci level. So this leg was the one that gave it a push and to the bottom right here so the 70 will be right here I'll be waiting and maybe you know I feel like this leg pushed it if this leg pushed it then I'll be waiting for 70 to come here but let me just move this here verify everything and then move this back and if that gets hit I'll keep a close eye on it just to see because I believe this leg pushed it down but hey this was a strong right here doji candle so I just put the price right there the mark right there sorry so this is what I'll be looking for on GBP AUD. And yeah, so if this comes up, let me move this again. So if this comes up here to the 70 or even this line, I'll keep an eye on it and then I'll get in for a sell. And what will I be targeting? Right here, anything from here, if a price comes up here, anything from here to all the way down here, right? Because price did go all the way down. But again, I'm gonna start off with a one-to-one -one and then ease my way into it. So that's GA. And GBP, JPY, let's get it. You see right here, it's in a downtrend, right? Let me just draw the trend lines, just visually it can help you guys out. Well, it can help me out too, right here. Right? Do something like this, right? And when you zoom into it, we're on the four hour. So what is it doing? It hit the resistance. But what did it do again? It hit the support line, right? You see right here, the support line, and it wicked up, but it didn't go through it. So right now, what I'm waiting is for a sell. You see all these candles right here bunched up together. I'm waiting for a sell to show me. Let me go to like 30 minutes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so right here. To show me anything that's cracking below, right? If I'm looking for a sell, what I'll be expecting is for price since I had already come down, actually this is kind of looking nice. Since I has already come down, rejected this right here, strong rejection, hammer, boom, hit that right here. And then, oh, where is that right here? So this is what I'll be looking for. It came from here, right? Straight down, it may look like a higher high, higher low, created that, it did right here, but I'm waiting for something to reject. Like this candle was nice. And I'm gonna be waiting for another hour candle to close. So this one has about, well, 35 seconds. If this one is looking good and a 30 minute is lining up with it, then I'll get in for a sell, right? I'm gonna push the market from here. Then I'll just push it down. And we'll just see how that goes. But that's my plan on this one. On GJ, I'm looking for a sell, right? If the market does not turn, again, we can't predict the future. We can just look back at what had happened and see and what can happen due to the circumstances that had been moving the market. All right, so right now, I'm just gonna be waiting, not in a rush to place any trades at all. I'm gonna take it easy. But these are the analysis for the five pairs. Now we'll just take a quick look at Forex Factory, the calendar for news that are coming up. And it doesn't seem to be a bunch of news coming up uh, this week. But we have red, that means it will come up right here so you guys can see high impact expected, right? The red indicates it's a little a bit of uh, volatility, volatility that may occur in the markets. So we'll be looking for something like this, employment change, unemployment rate to pop up. And right here, this is expected to announce on Wednesday, December 16 at 7.30 p.m. So if you're trading the AUD pairs, just watch out because whenever these extreme uh, news happen like employment change, NFP, unemployment rate, and everything like that, 
the market tends to be a little volatile during those moments. So if you have a position in, just be a little careful and secure your profits. And not a lot happening this week, but monetary policy steam, man. Yeah, that's what's happening this week with the fundamental side, right? So what I would like to do is do my technical side and then come to the calendar and look at what's, what's gonna happen with the news and then just match my trading to the news. You know, the news does not really affect your trading if there's not much things driving the currency. But if the currency is just flat, then you're good. But if the currency has some news attached to it or high volatility news attached to it, then just be careful when you're trading that. I'm just trying to keep this simple. Again, I'm sorry. The first video I recorded, it recorded the mic, but nothing came up on the video for some reason. So I'm just re-recording this again. Have a blessed day. Peace.